Thank you for coming back. Today we're going to be looking at French toast. The one on the cover of the uh, video will be the one we're doing in the video here. So the mixture is like a pale tan color, adding some yellow, a little bit of white, and a lot of translucent. So that's my bread mixture. And then for butter, you're going to want to mix a little bit of yellow to about just a pinch of yellow to a lot more white and then I'd add about that much translucent to it so here's the butter color once it's mixed and here is our French toast color once it's mixed so here we just have the bread color I've thoroughly conditioned it I'm going to roll it in a log now and show you how I shape it. So it's um, a cane in a sense because we're going to be taking slices off of it. But um, the way I create my French toast shaped cane is by creating a square. I use a clay roller for this. If you don't have a clay roller, you can use anything else that's cylindrical like this that's smooth. But I roll, flip, roll, flip, roll, and I just continue that. This is our way of reducing a square shape, getting nice square edges. Here we go. So the more you do that, it's going to turn very square on you. Now, um, here's my finished one. It measures 5 eighths of an inch across. And I'm going to show you how I do that front part. This is more toasty than my last French toast. I just wanted to have one that's somewhat ready for our next step. Okay, so this one is half an inch across, and I suggest you let this rest like your cakes. Um, you can do this next step before you let it rest because we want the sides nice and toasty. So what I'm going to do here is get some pastel dust. So here's our pastel colors. I'm going to rest yellow ochre and brown. And for the outside, I pick up a lot of rust. and I paint the outside of the cane. This is your outside edge of bread. So we want it to be darker than the inside. I haven't let this rest very long either. I made it just for the tutorial for you guys and I'm being impatient. But um, for texturing you want to wait let it reharden a little bit. So I would just go ahead and texture the whole thing, especially if you want to get out several French toasts. Now, to texture the French toast, I texture it on the cane. I don't slice it first. Um, if you let it sit and reharden a little bit, you won't squish it too much. So you want to let it sit at least a couple hours. And I texture much like I texture the cake. I go around in circles. So hopefully this won't take too long. I usually texture slower than this. Take a little bit more care with it. But um, French toast isn't exactly like a cake texture. It is flatter. You dip it in the batter and you fry it. 
you see light and dark splotches and areas which you're going to see how we create in a minute and you could decide how toasty or untoasty you want your French toast in the next step when we add our color So we're just going in circles over and over again. The longer you let this rest, the better. Between the last step we just did painting the outside and the actual texturing on the inside, like I said, a few hours would be good. Overnight would be better. You just don't want to let it sit so long that it will start cracking rather than, than um, lifting. Here we go. So from here, I start painting it, this brush had a lot of rust on it, I paint it with the yellow ochre color all over the top. I add a little bit of rust, perhaps a little bit of brown to add a little bit more of a toastiness in a couple areas. You don't want it everywhere. And then I come back on top of it and texture a little bit more. And it's okay if some of the golden color lifts off. That's actually how I do my muffins. I'll try to do the blueberry muffin soon for you guys. And so once we have it retextured, then I'm going to tap it with my toothbrush because oftentimes French toast, it has more of a flat surface. You have a lot of the look of texture and it will have some to it, but it doesn't look like cake or bread, if you know what I mean. So, here we have the bread textured. And then I slice. So you take a little slice, that would be your bread. And if you waited a couple hours before um, texturing, it wouldn't squish down into a rectangle, it would stay more square. We'll try to adjust it since I just did that. And then once you have it back into a square, then I take a cut on the diagonal. I separate them. Then I'm going to texture the open parts of the bread. And this one could look more cakey and not as flat. For the bottom one, I texture just the sides. And you could decide whether you want to stack your French toast on top of each other or not. But this is how I usually see it arranged on plates. So this is how I decided to do it. And even though you took all that time texturing, I smash it in the middle now. Poor little guy so there's an indent on him and then I'm going to take a safety pin dip it in a little bit of TLS and add it to that indent that's going to act as glue for our other slice to stay on now I'm going to texture the top slice of bread all the way across the cut end And it's not crucial that it's perfect. You're going to arrange uh, syrup dripping down it. If you really take your time, it will look more realistic. So there we go. We have our two slices of French toast 
one on top of the other. I'm going to see if I could lift this off and show you in my hands at this point. So there we go. So there we have our nice toasty French toast ready for some butter. Okay, my hands now have a little bit of the uh, pastel dust and stuff on it, so this poor little butter may get a little bit linty. But you take your butter and you make a tiny little square. I would suggest doing this part on your work surface rather than on your finger. It would be not so fun to slice yourself with a razor blade. And then from here, we go into the TLS again and put it wherever you want it on your French toast. And I'm going to slide my butter right there. So from here, we can bake it and add the syrup later, or you could add the syrup now and bake it. Um, I am going to show you how I mix the syrup. Here is some TLS in the background. Now the powdered food colorings I like because they mix more easily into the TLS and Fimo Deco Gel. They also mix well into the uh, triple thick. So you could pretty much look and see the color you're going to get. I'll just mix it with this color today. Um, this is a brand new color I got from Global Sugar Art. This is called Almond. So we're just going to see what this little guy looks like. It's uh, hard to tell in the wet TLS. You're going to have to actually bake it on your little French toast piece. Or you can um, bake it as a tester. Or this would actually be a really good um, reason to use the heat gun, like Dee suggests in some of my um, comments. She's mentioned using a heat gun. So if you can figure out what color your syrup will look like when it hardens, that's very nice. Um, it looks really like a really good, nice color, but I'd like to see a little bit more orange in it, because it has a bit of a purple cast to it. Not too much, but I think the spiced pumpkin would probably warm it up pretty nicely. So I take the spiced pumpkin color and mix it on in. I like spiced pumpkin for syrups. I use it all the time, but I've really been wanting to try this uh, Global Sugar Art, these new colors. And the almond is really pretty. Okay, so now that we've done that, I want to show you putting it on the French toast. I put a little bit in my baking pan. Then I put my French toast on it so it doesn't slide around so easily when I decorate the rest. A good way to tell whether the color is going to be what you like or not too is actually Fimo Deco Gel. If you use a little Fimo Deco Gel and mix your syrup color into it, you'll get a really good idea of what it's going to bake like, and then you can add TLS to thicken it if you have the Fimo Deco Gel. Um, it's not necessary. Just uh, if you don't want to <laughs> have to get rid of the French toast that you do, it, it really does help to have a tester. Because if it's perfect, then you're really happy. But if it's not perfect, um, you could lose a couple different pieces of French toast trying to get the color right. So, if you could harden a little test batch like this and peel it off, you could see what the syrup color would look like before you even put it on your French toast. So that's just a handy tip. Um, here we go. I'll go ahead and I'll cook these and uh, pretty soon you'll see the finished result as the cover photo for the tutorial. Thanks guys.